rescue tunnel and crossings at every 300 meters. It was thought to be the safest tunnel in the world. It runs through the chalk seabed that lies under the English Channel, connecting England and France. At 9.48 p.m. on the 18th of September, a Eurotunnel cargo train entered the Channel Tunnel at Sangat, near Calais, northern France. On one of the trucks in the cargo section of the train, a fire was smouldering. The fire spread to the train, and 19 kilometers inside the tunnel, it suddenly stalled. The blaze was soon out of control. In the smoke-filled darkness, the train's 33 passengers and crew were led towards the safety tunnel by the fire services. It was a narrow escape. You couldn't see because the, the smoke was getting into our eyes. I thought I was going to die, I really did. I was laying on the floor, everything was going, lightheaded. I thought I was going to die here. The passengers were safely evacuated, but the fire couldn't be controlled. It had already reached critical temperatures over 1,000 degrees centigrade. The concrete tunnel lining began to spall, falling away in huge chunks. At the heart of the fire, the lining was almost completely lost. Luckily, the tunnel was running through a dry part of the seabed. If there had been water on the other side of the lining, there would have been a catastrophic flood. Professor Gabriel Alexander Curie of Imperial College London has studied the 96 Channel Tunnel fire. Half the section was destroyed, and in some parts, the spawning took place all over the section right up to the ground. Now, that is structural damage. 500 meters of the section was damaged, of which 50 was serious. And that is in terms of the explosive spawning of concrete. The tunnel was lined with high strength concrete, where additives like fly ash create stronger chemical bonds in the concrete mixture. At the same time, the amount of water is reduced, which also increases strength. But in the Channel Tunnel fire, even this small amount of water became a hazard, turning to steam in the intense heat. The water pressure rose as high as 100 times atmospheric pressure. The steam pressures will build up faster than they can be diffused, and there is a risk of an explosion taking place. In the high temperatures, the lining of the tunnel literally blew itself apart. And the firefighters in 1996, they said that the concrete was falling on them like shrapnel. After the 1996 fire, Eurotunnel repaired the damage using the same high-strength concrete lining. But they upgraded their fire and rescue services in the tunnel, a strategy that withstood the test of another serious fire in 2008. Even though this type of concrete is now known to explode in intense heat, it's still in use in tunnels across the world. Some tunnels, like the Loschberg Base Tunnel, are immune to the threat of collapse. Because of this, the Swiss Alps, made of hard granite. We have a stable rock structure, so there's no risk of a breakdown of the tunnel. Even if this concrete here would burn down or break, the tunnel would not break down completely. So this is a risk that we can almost exclude. But 2,000 kilometers away in Istanbul, the Marmaray Tunnel doesn't have the protection of granite. It's lined with high-strength concrete, but lessons from the Channel Tunnel fire have been taken on board. In the, uh, history, there are that sort of accidents which happened both in the highway tunnels and also the railway tunnels. And Channel Tunnel fire is one of the most serious examples uh, in the past. So based on that, of course, we took lessons. The concrete used to line the Marmaray Tunnel is protected with a fire insulation layer. 
and there will be an application of fire insulation material depending on the ground conditions, drug quality, whether we are in the fracture zone, the groundwater level, because we have to eliminate catastrophic failure and we have to prevent flooding. The tunnel boring machine is a 150 meter long complex that removes the rock debris from the drilling face at the leading edge of the tunnel. We are at the end of that PBM pipe. Uh, we have, as I have mentioned, excavated two kilometers until now. And you may see that cutter head, which is the main part of the PBM machine you see there. Uh, these are the pistons which are located at the periphery of that cutter head, which has on the order of 75,000 kilonewton thrust force, which pushes the ground like that. So this machine is manufactured specifically for Marmarite project, considering all the soil conditions, the strength of the rock, etc. We will connect to the IMT, the element number 11 at the Asian site, so the IMT element and TBM will connect to IMT. We will do all these water insulation works and the inner concreting works. And at the end, we will be able to have the full tunnels under the Marmarite project. But fire is not the only threat to this structure. This huge tunneling project is only 10 miles from the North Anatolian fault line. For Deputy Project Manager Hossein Balkaya, structural failure and flooding of the tunnel due to earthquakes is a very real hazard. The uh, occurrence of a big scale earthquake in the next coming 30 years in Istanbul is 62%. This is really very high percent. Like the Channel Tunnel, the Marmaray Tunnel runs through the seabed. Flooding is a real and potentially catastrophic risk. It's a threat that was brought vividly to light two years into construction. At one of the stations that will link the tunnel system together, they unveiled the remains of the ancient harbour of Byzantine Constantinople. Complete with 32 warships, this was one of the greatest archaeological discoveries in Turkey's history. For archaeologist Doan Perinçek, the dig also offered up an environmental warning from history. This excavation area has many chapters and within this uh, uh, marshy sediments we have some sediments related to flooding. What caused this? What's the reason of this? For Doan, the key to unlocking the mystery lay in the historical records of Byzantium. In the 6th century there had been three major earthquakes and the new evidence of flooding pointed to one of earthquakes lethal side effects, tsunami. 1400 years ago, a giant wave had devastated the port. Earthquake during the 6th century and related to tsunami destroyed many things in, uh, in the region. And the, the part of the harbour destroyed and also wall of the city destroyed. And same tsunami destroyed the piers uh, located within the, within the harbour. Tsunami modelling suggests the wave was between 6 and 8 metres high and had struck the port right where a crucial element of the tunnel was now being planned. They are going to build a station here and entrance of this st station should be 6 or 8 metres higher than present day sea level, otherwise it will be disaster. The tunnel's designers took their history lesson to heart and raised the height of the station entrances to protect